Oh my. Welcome guys. Um, we are actually um, starting off. Let me put uh, um, something here. And also to be a bit, to be on, on Facebook and as well on uh, YouTube. So you can uh, also check us out there. Today we are speaking about sound doctrine. Let me just uh, type here, do you have a sound doctrine? Do you have sound doctrine? Um, just starting in a bit. Um, hmm. I also want to make sure that it's also on uh, YouTube. So if you can um, see me on YouTube, you can also uh, tell us. Um, just a second. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, and uh, let me also share on. Uh, all right. So Today I want to speak uh, concerning sound doctrine. And uh, this is something that uh, it's very important for all of us to be able to understand because the Bible tells us, unless you have a sound doctrine, then there's a big possibility that uh, what you're believing is something wrong. <clears throat> and that's why today I decided, let me just talk about sound doctrine because there are so many people who don't understand if they have a sound doctrine or they don't. And uh, <clears throat> I will share my screen and uh, show you something here. Let me share my screen. Mm. Now the Bible tells us in the book of Titus, <clears throat> Titus 1.9, that uh, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be uh, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So there are people who are called gainsayers uh, who need to be convinced. Those people who think that uh, you know there's some another way that people can be saved. There's another way that uh, you know we can get to heaven through this other way or things like that. So. For you to be able to convince these gainsayers, you need to hold faithful as you have been taught, okay? That sound doctrine, okay? The Bible is telling us that sound doctrine so that you can both exhort and to convince the gainsayers. And likewise, we see also the Bible telling us something else in 2 Timothy 4.3. Uh, let me just go there, 2 Timothy uh, for three, it tells us something concerning the last days and what will be happening. The Bible tells us, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. So there's a sound doctrine to be endured. There's a, a certain way that people need to learn and understand and be able to hear and know what the Bible is talking about. You see, the Bible is very clear on what uh, it has promised us. It has promised us that whoever will listen, whoever will do according to what the Bible is saying, um, he or she definitely will be saved. But people don't want to do what the Bible is saying. They don't want to follow the sound doctrine. They don't want to uh, follow what the Bible is talking about. And that's why most of the time you'll find people going to be waved, swayed uh, up and down in different uh things and at the end of the day most of them will go to hell having had nothing so for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but rather but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears so what will these teachers be telling them and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables okay so in the last days people will be turned unto fables they'll be They'll be believing anything. They'll be 
just doing whatever they think. And uh, they'll just be joining up some teachers and telling them, hey, tell us this and that. We want to hear this story. We want to hear that story. Can tell us the things that we enjoy. And uh, that's why you see the rising of the prosperity churches who don't, they, they don't speak the true word of God. All they do is naysaying. They give just any story which is from their, from their mind. I was seeing another uh, prophet today uh, I wouldn't mention his name, he's from Nigeria, mentoring a very big uh, uh, pastor here in Kenya. And I, I was just a bit interested and I, and I went to check on his doctrine. What does he say? And he was telling people, he was telling people that uh, you people, you need this. How many people have come with the Bible? How many have not come with the Bible? So guys, I want to tell you that whatever I speak is almost what God has spoken. So whether you hear from the Bible or you don't, you just hear from me, it is coming from God. And I was wondering and asking myself, what exactly is this? And why would uh, someone be saying that uh, uh, his, his words are more powerful than the Bible? You see, these are the people we call the gainsayers. They want to make you think that they are so much sent by God that whatever they, they say is, is much more powerful than the Bible. So they don't have a sound doctrine. That's exactly what you're talking about. And uh, in the book of Hebrews 13, 9, Hebrews 13, 9, uh, it tells us something here. Let me just go there. Hebrews 13, 9. 13 verses 9 tells us something here. Um, Do not be carried out with diverse and strange doctrines. The Bible is very clear. Don't be carried out with strange and diverse doctrines. For it is, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that they have been occupied therein. There are people who profit more in the meats and when the Bible talks about meats, meats are things which are benefiting only the flesh. You see, uh, maybe somebody is telling you that uh, this doctrine will be able to give you some prosperity, some health and wealth, some this and that, which are really good things. But now the problem is, if you keep on talking about, I only want these goodies alone, these goodies, A, B, C, D, and you forget exactly what the Bible is, is saying here, th these things will not profit you. Because the Bible is telling us very well that this, uh, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, be established with grace, okay? Not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. So I hope that one is uh, a bit clear and you can be able to understand it by yourself. Now, Jesus himself, he told us something and he told us about people who do some various weird things, following some strange doctrines. And at the end of the day, they are not even worshiping Jesus, okay? And he said in the book of Matthew, Matthew 15, 9, Jesus was a bit agitated about some people. And he told them how they worship using these strange doctrines, not the right doctrine which has been given in the Bible. And they create their own doctrines, what they're actually doing. Matthew 15, 9, the Bible says, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Like I was just saying today, the way I was watching that uh, prophet today, him telling people, just listen to me. There's no need of you listening to the Bible. And I saw that one was a, really a strange doctrine. It was a new thing, something that you cannot be able to explain. If um, we have to listen to you and not listen to the Bible, then you have uh, a doctrine of man. Look at the, the Catholic. They are more so about following the traditions that have been there in the Catholic Church rather than following the Bible. The Bible says do not uh, create any image, do not uh, bow unto images, do not create idols, do not call anyone the uh, father here on earth. And yet they're saying this is the tradition that we have found in the church all through. So they are basically following the traditions of men instead of doing the right thing which God already ordained. Okay. Let's see also 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 2. 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 2. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, from verse 1 to 2, it says, 
Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, the Bible is very clear about the last days. People will walk away from the true doctrines and they will start giving heed to seducing spirits and other doctrines. There are other doctrines which are called the doctrines of devils. Now, what are these doctrines of devils? People trying to tell you to do things which the Bible has refused. They are trying to tell you, follow a certain way which the Bible has said, no, don't follow this way. For example, is there any place in the Bible where you see uh, Jesus or any uh, apostle selling anointing oil? Then why are people selling anointing oil in the, in the church today? Why are people selling handkerchiefs today in church and they're saying, you know, go with this handkerchief, it will help you in ABCD? Why are people selling different things? Uh, so much is, is like witchcraft nowadays. So those are what you call the doctrines of devils. If it's not documented in the Bible, then it is a doctrine of devil. Like some of them in verse 3, it's saying, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. There are some churches that are well known nowadays, especially the Catholic ones again. And also we have, uh, which other church does um, refuse people from taking meats? They tell them that on Friday, you cannot take meat, you cannot take this kind of uh, uh, food, you cannot do this and that. These, these, these are the kind of doctrines of devils which the Bible has, has, has refuted. Let's continue and see. Forbidding to marry. Have you seen some churches which are forbidding people to marry? And what happens when you see those uh, Catholic priests, most of them, they are not married. They, 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 they sodomize young people and they do so much things because... These are doctrines which have been brought by the devil so that the much these people are not getting married and of course uh, they have their own bodily desires and all those kind of things. What happens? They will turn into uh, their lust towards one another, towards a priest and another priest and another altar boy and another person there. And that's why it's very important for you to follow the doctrine of God, not the doctrines of devils, okay? So when you hear somebody telling you, don't marry, don't eat some meats, don't uh, do, you know, some, verse 4 is saying, for every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused. Them refusing you in some, you know, some things, they're telling you, don't eat meat from this animal, don't take from there, then... Everything, according to the Bible, what is telling me here is that everything is to be received with thanksgiving, okay? For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So even if you're in a desert and there's no other thing that you can eat, okay? And there are some lizards there and that's the only food you can eat. Pray and tell God, I sanctify these things with, uh, with prayer, God, just like you've said in the Bible, because everything was created by God. So there are no idols. Actually, idols, the ones that they say, is basically worshiping Satan. There are no smaller gods. You, I cannot wake up one day and just decide this glass is going to be my God. How now can it be my God? The glass does not have ears, does not hear, it does not see, it does not sense. So how can it be a God? In, in, in simple terms, what they are worshiping is Satan. Okay. Let's see also 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16, it tells us something here. 3 verse 16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine. Now, this is something that most people, false prophets, they don't want to hear. That all scripture, it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. So I can reprove you using the Bible. Okay, for correction, I can correct you using the Bible. There are some chatterlands out there who don't want correction. They say, uh, don't correct me. I am anointed. Come on. If you're saying something which is out of the Bible, it's good for you to be corrected. If I say something which is out of the Bible, please correct me and tell me this is what the Bible says. And Keith, here you're wrong. And there you're wrong because you'll give, be giving me the right sound doctrine. Let's continue. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, there are people who say, oh, 
no works, no works, fine. The Bible is very clear about you're not saved by works. But after you're saved by grace, through faith, not of works, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, you're saved by grace, through faith. It is not of yourself, it's a gift. It is a gift, okay? But you must have some good works after you've been saved. Why? Because in Ephesians 2, verse 10, it tells us, for we are God's workmanship, created unto good works. So after we have been created, because we are, we are created in the image of God, the moment, the moment we are born again, we are recreated again into the image of God. Because remember, in Genesis 5.3, it tells us that after Adam, uh, uh, Adam died, I mean, Adam gave birth to uh, seared a child, and he called his name Seth, who was after his own image and likeness. Why was Seth in the image of Adam? Because it was a, an image of sin, okay? So every other person who is born after after Adam is 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 a two thirds of a man. That's why it's, we call it 0.666. If you divide two out of three, that gives you 0.666. Okay, the number of man. That's the image of a fallen man. But the moment we get saved, we get another image. We are now recreated in the image of God. Our spirit comes alive through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, when it comes alive, now we are created. And to good works, this new beginning, it is for good works. What kind of good works? To preach the gospel to those who don't know the gospel, to tell others about uh, Jesus Christ, to tell uh, people uh, what they need to hear concerning salvation and things like that. And, not, and also to give a good testimony for the sake of uh, helping people to get uh, saved. But most people don't want to hear that. What they want to hear is... Uh, Tell us what will, you know, what our itching ears want to hear. Tell us about prosperity. Tell us, tell us about how we'll get rich, how we'll be this and that. Tell us those good things. That's exactly what people want to hear. And I can tell you, my friend, if, if all you have is, is the good things, is what you're chasing in, in church, you're going to be so much confused with some very weird doctrines that you cannot even tell where they have come from. The Bible tells us something concerning uh, what we should do about the sound doctrine that we have, okay? And in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, it tells us, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why is the Bible insisting about doctrine? It's telling us, preach the word, be instant in season. Don't just say, um, I only speak godly things on Sunday. I only speak godly things at this time. Be instant in season and out of season. Even if you sit down and you see you're in the midst of people who are smoking bang and others are drinking and others are fornicating or doing any other thing. Always be instant in season and out of season, giving truthful doctrine. Let's take, for example, how many people go to school and you say you're a born again Christian and you're in class and your teacher is teaching you about evolution and is telling you how, uh, you know, the human beings evolved from some uh, monkeys and others came out from, you know, bacteria changed and became man. And you're there disapproving God. You see, we should be instant in season and out of season. You should wake up and tell that teacher, please, this is not the truth. The truth is that we are created in the image of God because that's exactly what the Bible tells us. Because nowadays, the school syllabus, the, uh, the, 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 the world system is all about brainwashing people and telling them how much God is of no effect, is of none effect in our lives. Trying to, dis, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they are trying to show that God does not exist in any way. They are trying as much as they can to, to show people, no, 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 you are not created, you evolved. They want to show, no, no, this world was not created by God. It came from a big bang theory. They're trying to say, no, 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 you see, there is no hell. You see, there is no heaven. H hell and hell is just separation from God. You see, all those kind of things, they try to confuse you and they give you another doctrine which the Bible tells you, rebuke such kind of people, okay? Rebuke them and tell them, no, I need to reprove you and rebuke you. And I exhort what is right, okay, with all long suffering and doctrine. So don't be swayed away by different doctrines 
and get confused, okay? And uh, we see also Paul say, saying something here in 2 Timothy 3.10. Paul says, eh, but, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Why is he saying that you have known my doctrine? Because he speaks the doctrine which is in the Bible, which uh, has been given by God. He says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution, affliction, which came unto me and, at Antioch. And I, Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of all them, the Lord delivered me. So he has talked about doctrine. He says that what I've been preaching, I've never changed either for money or for wealth or for anything. I've never changed. I've always stood with the truth, the sound doctrine, the truth, okay? I've always stood with that. And the Bible is very clear concerning that, okay? And uh, in 1 Timothy 5.17, 1 Timothy uh, 5.17, it says something else here. It says, let the elders that rule be well counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So if you're not laboring in the word and the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, then you're not supposed to be counted uh, worthy. You're not supposed to be given any honor. And the Bible is clear. So when you see somebody who is not giving the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, they are all after uh, making themselves great. They're all after uh, telling people vanities and telling people how they will be rich and how they'll do uh, things which are, do not even apply. Others, they keep on saying the blessing of Abraham was their riches. The blessing of Abraham was justification through faith. That is exactly what we call the blessing of Abraham. Okay, so most of the people, when you see them, they are giving another doctrine, which is a lie. Then uh, these people are not supposed to be given any honor. Okay, but when you see somebody is giving the true right doctrine, these people are worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word of God. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's see also 1 Timothy 4, 6. Uh, the book of First Timothy uh, 4, verse 6. If, you, if, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. If you make people, the brethren, to stand on the sound doctrine, then you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So when you make people be able to follow the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, then you, the Bible says, you are a good minister. But a bad minister it is, is the one who is taking people away from the true, true doctrine of Jesus Christ, the true teaching of salvation. They're taking you away. Those are bad ministers. And the Bible says the good ministers are those who stick with the word and they don't change despite uh, the challenges and all those things which are happening, okay? Ephesians 4.14, 4, Ephesians 4.14, 4, Paul tells us something here that um, it says, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children. You're being told, don't, don't be a ch child anymore, you're, you're, after you got saved and after you changed, you're no more a child. He's saying, don't, don't be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Yeah. You see, there are people who are carried away when you tell them, no, no, I've just discovered a new thing. There's a new revelation. There's a new idea. These people who talk about new, 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 new thing. Come on. The Bible is always talking about stay with the old ways, not come with the new ways. That's how people are going towards the new world order and new, 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 new stuff. By the time you realize you're already deep rooted into uh, devilish things because you wanted something new. The Bible tells us, don't be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They sit down and they wait to deceive you, giving you stories, giving you, there's something new that you have discovered. There's something new, okay? But speaking truth in love may grow up into him all things which is the head, even Christ. Be truthful. Speak truthful with love. 
tell others about the love of Jesus Christ. Don't be taken to and fro with every new doctrine. There's a new pastor who has come in town. This pastor, I think, is the one who is taking people to heaven. No, no, no. I think this pastor is all. There's another new pastor who has come. You're always being tossed to and fro like a child. No, 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 no. When you've known Jesus Christ and you've continued reading his word and doing according to what he has said, don't be carried to and fro in every wave of doctrine, but grow up, grow up, grow up. That's exactly what the Bible is telling us, okay? And in Romans 6, 16, 17, I don't know if 6 or 6, 16, let me check. Romans 6, 16, I think, yes. 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 to 18, it says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions. There are some people who cause divisions in the church. Mark them, okay? And offenses contrary to the doctrine. People who bring something which is contrary to the doctrine, okay? Contrary to the doctrine. Mm -hmm. uh, where was I? Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Why are we being told to avoid these people? Because they are teaching us things which might, might uh, pull us down, which might make God angry with us, which might make uh, a God not pleased with us. Of course, uh, we are at peace right now with God, but there are things that we do, and at the end of the result is death, because the wages of sin is death. Yes, you are saved. Yes, you cannot lose your salvation. But if you continue doing whatever you're doing, which is wrongful, then your flesh is going to die. Yes, your spirit will go to heaven, but your flesh will die. If you go to a bank and say, hey, guys, I want to steal from you right now. Or you stand uh, in front of a policeman and you want to shoot him. He will shoot you back. No matter how much of a Christian you are, you will die. Because the wages of sin is death. If you go and steal uh, somewhere in the marketplace, what is going to happen? Mob justice will kill you. They will not care if you're born again Christian or not because the wages of sin is death. So let's not listen to people who are pulling us away from the true doctrine. And uh, these kind of people, they are to be avoided. Avoid them, avoid them. Yeah? And also tell others so that they can also avoid them. So I see many people nowadays saying, oh, do not judge, do not judge, do not judge. But do you know the Bible tells us that we should judge? The Bible tells us that a righteous person judges everything, but he himself is to be judged by no one. Why? Because he is a righteous person. He will have no one to judge him because he's doing everything which is right. That's exactly what it means. It doesn't mean that they are special. No, it means that they will have no one to judge them because they are walking in the right true word, the true doctrine. But if you're always doing wrongful things, you will be judged 24-7. And you should be judged, actually. Okay? Romans 6, 17. Romans 6, 17. Mm, oh, sorry. That's exactly where I was. Let's go to Titus 1, verse 10 to 11. Titus 1. 10 to 11. Titus 1, 10 to 11. It says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now, what does the Bible mean by saying this? There are many, many, many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Those of the circumcisions are those people who are more of the law. They are keeping the law. You see, the Bible says, Circumcision and circumcision availeth nothing. So don't keep on coming and telling us, hey, you have to keep this, you have to do that, you have to do that. Hmm? Those to do, 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 those things that they keep, they keep on saying, most of them, the Bible tells us what? Most of them are unruly, vain talkers and deceivers whose mouths must be stopped. This is not me, this is the Bible. It says, this kind of people, their mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Lucre is money. So people, they teach filthy things. They teach whatever they want for filthy lucre's sake, for the sake of money, which is, God is calling it filthy, filthy of no use. Okay? Listen, verse 12. Of uh, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own said, 
The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, low bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn, that turn the, uh, from the truth. Okay? Now, you see, the Bible is telling us this kind of people who cause divisions, this kind of people who give others uh, wrong doctrines, we are supposed to silence their mouths and make them stop from giving uh, things which are false. I, I always get irritated all the time when I see people saying, oh, I'm, uh, this guy is a minister of God. Don't touch the anointed. Don't touch the anointed. But when you see the one who is being called anointed here is giving some false doctrine. It's giving some things which are not even biblical. He's saying some things that when you look, you're like, mm, I don't think God could even have meant this. Even with all the Bible, he could not even have meant this. How can you uplift yourself more than God? Do you think God would have been pleased by that? Instead of praising God, now we are supposed to praise you. These people should be stopped. And these people should be rebuked. Okay? They should be rebuked. And that's why the law was there. You see, the law, the Bible tells us the law is not for the righteous. The law is for the people who are sinners. The law is meant for the people who cannot think straight. You see, God is a, a, a really uh, mysterious God. You see, the essence of God is not about keeping the law. It's not about keeping rules. And I want to explain to you this because look at the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the teachers of the law. The law was the word of God. And these people, they knew the law back and forth. They could read the whole, you know, law from beginning to the end, and they knew everything, okay? But these people, their all essence was after keeping that law, but not understanding the mind of God, okay? The Bible tells us right now we have the mind of Christ. Why do we have the mind of Christ? Because we now understand exactly what, what's behind this law. The law, actually, Jesus did not even intend to have the law. This was just brought because people, they needed a formality of doing things. And that's why Jesus said, unless your righteousness surpasses the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will in no way enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because of one thing. If you only look after, uh, I've been told, do not lie. Do not do this. Do not do this. I'm only doing it. And I don't know what's the story behind me not doing that. It's all after love. You see, I love Jesus so much such that I cannot go killing people. I love Jesus so much. I cannot go lying to his creatures who are people. I love Jesus so much. I cannot go doing evil things because of this love. That's why you don't uh, uh, go against his will. But people think that because I'm keeping the law, I am good. You see, like uh, some, uh, Seventh Day people, SDA, Seventh Day Adventists, they think because they keep the law, they are holy. There's nothing which is holy about keeping the law. The law is just brought there for the lawless ones. Let me just show you something here. In First Timothy, First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.9, I want to show you something here. 1 Timothy 1, verse 9 to 10. It tells us something about this law. Uh, 1 Timothy 1, verse 9. Listen. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Listen, the law is not made for a righteous man. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for womongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for prejured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. That is what the law is meant for. So if you're keeping the law so that you can please God, then he's not pleased by you keeping the law. He's pleased by you doing his will, loving him, understanding why Jesus had to die for me. The moment you understand I was a filthy, wretched, uh, 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 helpless sinner, and all the things that were in my mind was all about sin and sin and sin and sin. And God had mercy on me. I could have died a long time. And he had mercy on me and he saved me. And now through understanding what he did for you, 
You say, I, 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 would, I would never want to make my God angry. I want to walk in his ways. He tells me, follow this way. I know his ways are good. I know his blessings are yes and amen. I know he can never lead me to a wrong path. I know he's, uh, he has good plans for my life. His plans are not after me to do wrong things and then I end up in hell. They are not after me uh, going, getting drunk and then uh, getting into a car accident and dying. I should do what is right. When you understand that, then you will have nothing to do with the law. The law is only meant for the people who don't understand themselves, for the people who are all after doing uh, lawless things. That, that's who the law is meant for. So right now we are not supposed even to keep the law. We are supposed to love God with all our hearts and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That's the whole completion of the law. And when you understand these things, you'll come from the mindset of living like a Pharisee to another mindset of living the way Christ wanted us to live. Because if these Pharisees could have understood the essence behind the law, then Jesus could have said they are the most holy people. But why did he say that they are, they are, they are, he called them hypocrites? He called them all the names that he could ever think. Why? Because these people, they only thought by keeping this law, by, by following, you see, by following this and this and this and this, I can say, okay, I've done it all. Remember that story of the, the, that poor woman, that poor widow who was giving in church the uh, offering? And she gave two coins. And then Jesus said she has given more than everyone else. Why did Jesus have to say that? It's not because this woman was giving and, uh, you know, she had uh, sacks of money. They are Pharisees and other people are coming and giving sacks of money. They are giving everything. They want to show Jesus, hey, Jesus, are you seeing how much you are giving? But Jesus was not even interested with that. He was looking at the love behind. He was looking at the, at, at, at the, at the intention of the heart. You see, following the law is one thing, but, but doing things which are right unto God is another thing. You see, this uh, rich man and other people in the, the Pharisees and other people in that time in that church, they went there and gave a lot. Not that giving a lot was bad, but their intention was all after following the law. We have been told to give this and this amount, so I should be going there to give. No. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves someone who does things from his heart. Someone who follows uh, the, 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 the commandments of God from the heart. Actually, it's not even a commandment. You just love your God and love your brother 100%. And you'll have kept every law. You will not kill them because you love them. You'll not steal from them because you love them. You'll not be corrupt because you love them. You'll not use God's name in vain because you love him. You will not do this and that. You see... If you understand these things, then it will mean that you're already there. But most people, they don't want to, they, they don't want to hear the sound doctrine. And if you don't want to hear the sound doctrine and you hear what is exactly is that thing that God is telling us uh, to be right on. So that's why you find all the time people are, are going on and off. Now, I, I want to tell you something in the, in the book of James. I want to show you something here. In the book of James, mm, <laughs> all right, the book of James, uh, two verses, uh, verse what? Verse 17, it says, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being alone. Why is the Bible saying that uh, faith without works is dead? And yet we see Apostle Paul telling us that you're not saved by faith, uh, by, by works. It is because of one thing. If you say you have faith in Jesus Christ and you have believed and you don't have good works, then your faith was most probably fake. Why? Because the moment you believe in Jesus Christ, he gives us a new heart and a new mind. And the things that we used to do, we do them no more. And right now we have a lot of love for Jesus Christ. We have a lot of love for other people. And we want to do right and righteous things because we love Jesus Christ and we understand him. We are not doing these good things because you are following the law. We are not doing these things because we are following a certain uh, schedule which is, uh, has been set forth. We are doing these things because we love Jesus Christ with all our hearts. And that's why if you find you say that you're saved, 
and you're still doing very wrong things and you're always intentionally over and over and over. I'm not saying about falling once and uh, once, twice, because we are still in the flesh. You can find yourself, you have done something and you're like, oops, I did not expect I, uh, to do that. And immediately you feel sorry and you, and, you, and you repent. Repent means just change your mind and turn away from what you are doing. Let me tell you, unless you can see that in your life, then mostly your salvation was fake. And what you believed was basically fake. Because unless there is a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of the way you are doing things, then uh, your faith is really, really dead. And for those who say, oh, faith is all, uh, these people are saying faith plus works. No, I'm not saying faith plus works. You're saved by faith alone. But that faith must have works later on because Bible tells us, like I told you in Ephesians 2.10, that we are God's workmanship created unto good works. Okay? Let's look at James 2 verse 18. It says here, Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You may say, Oh, it's not faith and works. And no. Let me, let me show you. I will show you my faith through my works. Why will I show my faith through my works? Because if I have good works, which are righteous works, righteous deeds, it shows that my faith initially was absolutely true. I can be saved today and I've changed my mind and changed my heart into the things of God. And the next day I am out there beating people and killing people and doing all the evil things. Now, did I really have a changed heart? Did I really have a changed mind? No, I did not have. I only have a, a, a false salvation, a false doctrine. Maybe I've been converted wrongly. And that's why it's very important. You watch who you listen to. There are some people who will be so much shocked when the rapture happens. They'll be left there with their pastors. They'll be left there and they'll be asking. And, and I wonder, that day after the rapture happens, people will really be traumatized are the fake pastors. Just imagine people have realized that the rapture has happened and people have already gone and they come to your house and they find you there. What are they going to do? They will eat you raw. They will beat you up and ask you, why did you have to lie to us all this time? At least you could have told us to go and look for uh, the sound doctrine in another place. Why would you lie to us all this time, telling us the prosperity, uh, good health, good things? You see, telling us, uh, giving us the mentality that we need to focus on our lives right now. Eh? Your best life now, Joel Austin, what he says, your best life now. Get your best life now. It's all about prosperity. God wants you to be rich. Rich where? You're getting a false doctrine. And at the end of the day, what is that false doctrine is going to give you is a false conversion. And after a false conversion, it means all your life you will stay thinking that you're saved, but you're not saved, my friend. When the, the rapture happens, you'll be left here crying and asking yourself, why was I left here and I was in the church every day? I was at the front row singing in choir every day. My friend, you had a wrong doctrine. You had a wrong, 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 wrong doctrine, okay? Now, let me show you something else here. The Bible tells us in uh, Titus 2, verse 1. Let me go back to Titus again. Titus 2, 1. It tells us, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. As you speak, don't speak any other thing. Speak things which become sound doctrine. That the aged man may be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Okay, now listen to this. I, I, I think this one, I, I'll, I'll share my screen. Let me share my screen and show you something here. Uh, this one is saying, this is um, Titus 2.1. Mm, Titus 2 verse 1. Okay, let me show you this. I want you to see this very clearly. The Bible is saying, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged man may be sober, okay? The aged man may be sober. Have you seen some aged men who behave like children, who behave like as if they are drunk and confused? The Bible says, no, you should be sober, grave, temperate, 
sound in faith and in charity and in patience. And also the aged women likewise, likewise means as above. They should also, the women likewise, after being sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity and in patience, they, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Now holiness, what does the word holiness mean? The word holiness means to be set apart, okay? Holiness, holiness. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Uh, I want to show the word. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Um, okay, here as becomes holiness. Okay, holiness. Mm. Oh, let me just check for the meaning, exact meaning of this. Holiness, where, where, where is this? I'm sure exactly what holiness means. It doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't mean what people think. Uh, the phrase, okay, it's here. Let's see the meaning of this word. Um, where is it, where is it, where is it? It means to be set apart, set apart. Uh, okay, forget that. Let me let me get it from Google here immediately, and you see holy. Holiness. What does it mean? It means uh, Bible Bible meaning. You see, the good thing about this is that you can you can be able to check even different words and exactly what uh, it means. What's the biblical meaning of the word holiness? Okay, uh, forget these pop things. The problem with the with most of these things on Google, they are only giving you exactly what the what the pop says. Anyway, all in all. Uh, let me just not waste much time. But the word holy, it means to be set apart. You be set apart. You be different. Uh, I've not been able to find uh, how I can see that. But it means be set apart. Don't be like uh, any other person. Be a set apart person. Okay. Be ye holy for I am holy. Why was God saying that be ye holy? He says be ye holy because he wants you to look like him. God is set apart apart. It does not look like the other people. It does not do wrong things like that. The people always do them. So the Bible is telling us here, the age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holy, okay? Holiness. They should not be like any other person out there. Not false accusers. Have you seen women who are always false accusers? They love gossiping. Not given too much wine. Have you seen women who are taking wine? Too much wine? I'm not saying drinking of wine is not bad. The taking of much wine is always the one which is bad. But of course, you cannot be able to say how much is small and how much is big, uh, how much is uh, much. So you rather just stay away from it, okay? Teachers of good things. This is now the sound doctrine that we're talking about. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Now, young women, most of them are always drunk, especially every weekend. They're always drunk nowadays to love their husbands how many of them do love their husbands very few most of them they always try to be equal with their husbands they try to do as much as they can to be equal equal rights to love their children to to be discreet chest keepers at home good obedient to their own husbands that the word of god be not blasphemed okay so they, they, they should not blaspheme the word of God. And also another thing here, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things showing themselves a pattern of good works. You see again, the good works are coming here. Why good works? Good works because we are saved unto good works. We are not supposed to uh, be saved and then we, we have nothing to testify of the goodness of God. When somebody looks at you, he says, I wish I was not a Christian. If this is like what we call Christianity, then I don't want to be one. Why? Because your works are really bad. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, 
gravity, sincerity, sound speech, okay? Sound speech. Many people don't have sound speech and it's very important for you to have a sound speech. What you say, let people be able to say, wow, if that is what we call Christianity, I want to be one. I want to be a Christian. That cannot be condemned. How many times are you always condemned for saying uh, vain things and saying things which do not even make sense? And people all the time, they're saying, no, 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 that's all, that was a lie. Come on, you're lying to us. Come on, you stole from us. Come on, you did this person evil. Okay, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed. When you do these good things, the one who is contrary will be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you, okay? Having no evil thing to say of you. But most people don't want this. What they say, what they want is always doing evil things, doing evil after evil after evil after evil. And they don't care what people are saying. They say, oh, I rather do what pleases me. You see, the motto for the Satanist is do as you will. Whatever that you want, do it. But the Bible has told us, no, don't do as you will. Do what God wants, okay? Do what God wants. And when you see people who are going against the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, there's something that you have been told to, to do to them, okay? When you see somebody is doing something which is wrong and is and, and is, a, is a Bible believer or something like that, and uh, he says that he's a Bible believer, you see that many say that they are Bible believers, but they are liars. When you see somebody saying he's a Bible believer and is going contrary the word of God to the word of God, then the Bible tells us to do something. Don't fear. Do something here. And it's what I want to open to you from the book of Titus. Titus 2.15. What does it say? These things speak, okay, and exhort and rebuke with all authority and let no man despise thee. When you see anything happening, always use the word of God to speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Why are we being given all authority? Because some Christians, they think that, uh, you see, I'm doing God a favor by not touching the anointed. I'm doing God a favor by keeping quiet when somebody is, is uh, leading people to hell. The others, they think I'm doing God favor because... Uh, you see, I did not cause any trouble in the church. I just heard that person is a false teacher leading, uh, is a blind man leading other blind people. And I kept quiet because I did not want to speak about it. You see, it would have been a bad thing for me to shout at a man of God. Come on, shout it. Why? Because there's something we call, the Bible calls the sin of omission. You omitted to do something which you knew was right. You said, uh, I know this person is going to fall into a ditch, but let me keep quiet. Come on, it doesn't concern me. Let him fall. If he falls, it's not me. Who is going to ask me for anything? When that person falls into a ditch, God is going to blame you. God is going to uh, uh, ask that from you. It's going to, you see, <laughs> the Bible is very clear about his people. And uh, we are the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is supposed to protect to be protected 100%. So when you see someone who is also a bride of Christ and is being taken left, right, and center, what happens? It means that God is going to blame you so much, okay? The Bible says that we are God's watchmen. Uh, uh, let me show you. If a watchman, uh, let me see this. Uh, I'll show you a verse here. Um, Let me show you a certain verse here from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, I was looking for that verse. Ezekiel uh, 33, uh, 6. See what the Bible is saying here. <laughs> You'll be so much amazed by this. But if the watchman sees the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's heart. So you are a God watchman. You are watching over his people. You are watching over the people so that they don't go away from the true doctrine and they be led away and go to hell. 
If you keep quiet as a watchman, you don't warn the people and tell them, hey, you are on a wrong doctrine. You're, you will go to hell because of what you're doing. Then your blood, your blood will be required. Your blood will be required. Now, let me give you a good example. I want to give you a good, good example. Let's say somebody, uh, somebody uh, sees, maybe you see, for example, you, 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 you see some uh, thieves, they are beating uh, my child somewhere there. And them beating my child, they beat that child so much and you just pass by and you say, ah, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be involved. That, that's, not, that's not my child, let him. And you're a neighbor, okay? You're a neighbor. You're my neighbor and you see my child being beaten by some, uh, some, some boys there or some thugs and you do nothing to help. And you walk your way and you say, I don't care. Now, if they kill that child or they hurt that child so much, let me tell you, even if I had traveled on a safari, when I come back, I will look for those thieves. I will make sure they're jailed. And as a matter of fact, I will look for that person who was watching there, who was you, and I will also make sure that I deal with you. Why? Because you watched my child being uh, beaten, being all these things happening to him, and you did not care. You could have even have called some other neighbors to go and at least try and do something. You didn't care. You saw uh, uh, my child or my wife or someone eh? or the bride. Yeah? Somebody is just waiting to get married. And of course, while he's doing his planning, you hear the bride was being uh, uh, beaten by some thugs and you do nothing. Let me tell you, when the groom comes, he's going to deal with you as well. We are, the church is the bride of Christ. And when you see them, them being beaten by wrong doctrines and being tossed back and forth and they don't understand and you keep quiet, that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, let me tell you, there's one main thing that I like to explain to you, which is all about salvation. And salvation is where the bottom line and the heart of the doctrine is. And if you don't tell people how to be saved, you tell them they can be saved by repeating a certain prayer. You tell them that they can be saved by being baptized. You tell them that they can be saved by doing some good works, giving to the poor, giving to the church. They can be saved by this and that. Then you're telling them a wrong doctrine because there's no place in the Bible where we see salvation is from works. There's nothing that you can do to gain your salvation. There's nothing which you, there's no amount of baptism which can give you salvation. There's no amount of prayer which can give you salvation. There's no amount of anything. Why am I saying this? You may wonder, why am I talking about a prayer cannot give you salvation? Now, let me show you something here. Let me share my screen once again and show you something here. You'll be able to understand so easily exactly what salvation is. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 1, 13, Ephesians 1, 13, it tells us something here. And I want to show you exactly what salvation is. The Bible says, in whom you also trusted, okay, you trust. After that, you heard the word of truth. So you trust after you hear the word of truth. So what is this word of truth? The word of truth is the gospel of your salvation. So the gospel is the word of truth. This gospel is the word of truth. So you, you, you trust after you hear the gospel. In whom also after that you believed, so after you hear, then you believe that gospel, you become sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The Bible tells us very well, you have to hear and uh, you have to hear the gospel and, of course, understand it, and then you trust it. So which is what is this gospel? The Bible tells us what the gospel is. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, uh, 15, 1 through 4. Okay, let me open like this. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Uh, sorry, let me open again. 1 Corinthians uh, 15 verses 1 it goes 1 through to 4 
You mean some Bibles that don't have this? <laughs> First Corinthians. Corinthians or me. Oh, maybe I, I misplaced spelled. First Corinthians 15 from verse 1. Uh, yeah, sorry. I think I'd misplaced, misspelled. So 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So Paul is telling us this is the gospel. I declare to you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Okay? So this gospel was, he already preached to them. And also they received that gospel and now they stand in that gospel by which also you are saved. Now look at that word. You are saved by this gospel. If you do what? If you keep in memory, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you believed in vain. Now keeping in memory the gospel, what does it entail? Keeping in memory is understanding the gospel. The only way you can keep something in memory is if you have understood it. You can never keep the gospel in your mind unless you have understood it. You see, the Pharisees, they knew the whole law of God, but they had never kept it in memory. Why? Because they had never understood it. You keep it in memory when you have understood because the moment it is in your mind, something to remember, it also flows into your heart. And the Bible says, we never believe through our minds. We believe from the heart. So when you keep in memory and you understand it well, then it absorbs into the heart. And once it comes into the heart, you are definitely 100% sure that you have it right. So by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received. So Paul is telling us, I'm not giving you another gospel. I'm giving you what I already received. How, look at this word, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood at the cross. He shed his blood at the cross. So much happened. And Jesus, he shed that blood. The Bible tells us without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So how Jesus died by shedding his blood. If Jesus could have died of heart attack, drowning in water, electrocution, or any other way of being strangled to death, then there could be no salvation. Why? Because there could be no shedding of blood. So how that Christ died. Now there are five different folds of salvation. You have to believe that Christ died. If you believe that Christ died, it means you believe that God the Son became man and he dwelt with us. For our sins, he did not die for nothing. He died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. If you believe that Jesus was buried, it means that you believe that he took our sins to the grave with him. He became our unleavened bread. And he went with our sins together there in the grave. You also are buried with him, okay? And that he rose again. If you believe he rose, then you believe God, the Holy Spirit. Then it means that you believe that the Holy Spirit is the one who rose Jesus. So he rose again. So that one is very significant for us. The third day, according to the scriptures. Why the scriptures? Because the scriptures were inspired by God. And this is the reason why you can even see according to the scripture two times. According to the scripture and according to the scripture. To even give it an insisting of that the scriptures were the perfect word of God. All right? So once you believe that, then you are saved. That's exactly how you are saved. You're not saved by anything else. You're saved by believing the gospel, believing that Jesus died for you. He died for your sin. He didn't die for anything else. Let me tell you, that's exactly what we call the gospel. That's exactly how people are saved. That's exactly the true gospel, the true doctrine of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, my friends, I tell you, you have nothing else to worry. So I hope it was a blessing. I hope uh, it was a blessing to you. Uh, at least you've been able to hear something which was uh, of great advantage. Please 
tell others about the gospel, tell others uh, about what Jesus is saying, because the time, time is really, really flowing, and you never know, you never know when he will be coming. So God bless you, and have a blessed, blessed time. See ya.